Hello, welcome back to uh, the 100% speedrun tutorial for Big Tits Adventure 2. Last time we completed level 2 and 3, and this time we're going to be doing level 4. Um, this is not the route you would normally take to get there, because you'd be continuing from level 3, but I suppose if you accidentally um, continue or save from the Triforce, then this is how you would get back there. You simply take the shortest path back to level 3's area, and then slash through the wall. Like so. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I need to re input the code. We actually need to kill these dark nuts again. You can avoid killing these dark nuts again by um, opening up something coming up. Give me a second. Hmm. Oh, one thing I could actually mention now that I'm fighting these Dark Nuts again um, is a trick to killing them if you don't want to use Super Bombs for whatever reason or if you're in the future playing in a category um, where you can't use them uh, because you can't use the cheat code or something like that. Um, you can kind of stand at an angle to the Dark Nut. Um, you have to be in line with them. I'm not very good at doing this. I usually just rely on the Super Bomb method, but... You do that. This is a three-star warp. Um, what it will do, I guess I'll show it off. Um, I never do this during my speedrun route, but it can take you between four different locations. Uh, these were previously available on the map, but they didn't actually have the stairs there to take you into the warp. This is the first one that unlocks those. Um, I don't enter this at any point during my run, so... So when you enter here, you want to have the boomerang equipped and be stunning these things instead of attacking them like I was. Um, hit up these ladders. This level is extremely linear, um, which also means that if you die, you lose a lot of progress, so you want to be careful. With the cheat code, it's not too bad, but um, without it, it can be extremely rough, and it's probably one of the hardest levels, especially to do fast. Here we have... Um, some boulder RNG. Sometimes they'll hit you, there's not much you can do about that. At least to my knowledge. Like I said, the, uh, the run is still kind of in its infancy. Okay, I'm getting a really bad luck here. You would want to use bombs or super bombs on these. Um, it's been uh, a little bit since I recorded the first segment, so... Here we have Vyas. They'll start off as these, um, as these things. Actually, can I do this? This might be faster. Yes, I can. Well, <laughs> discovering something while doing the tutorial. Anyway, then you want to head down to this rock, push it. Oh, I actually started the. And you want to immediately switch to the hook shot. Use it here. Switch over to bombs. You want to head left. Uh, make sure you have super bombs equipped here. Because we're going to be fighting another manhandler. Wait for it to line itself up with you. And. Okay, that time I failed. Uh, you can get this in one shot, and that's really fast. Um, if not, then just. Uh, yeah, there you go. And you need to get the magic shield. That's why we come in here. You can leave, go right. And uh, there's really not a lot to say about this level. It's kind of obvious. You just want to get through it as quickly as possible. Um, the linearity and the lack of puzzles means that um, there's not really a lot to do. You just kind of... Make sure that you know what rooms are coming up and when you need to use bombs for whiz robes or the hookshot or something like that. And be ready with that. Try to avoid these bubbles, obviously. It's kind of a no-brainer. Um, you don't want to go left. That's pointless. And you want to keep hookshot equipped here um, as you descend this mountain. Because <clears throat> you're going to need it right here. And then switch back to 
boomerang because it's tech tights. And then switch to bombs. Back to hookshot. Like, you kind of need to anticipate what item you're going to need and switch to it quickly. Here we can bomb this. You can bomb slightly before it to save some time. Um, you need to fight those wizard robes to clear the rocks, but you don't need to fight these ones. They just drop a fairy. Here we have mountain heart piece. Head back out. And then we just climb. <coughs> You're not going to have your sword right now because you probably will have touched the red bubbles. Make sure you hit the blue one um, in this room. Otherwise, uh, you'll have to come all the way back here uh, once you do the trick. Because I think you'll probably need your sword for uh, things coming up. I don't know. Just uh, don't, don't let that happen. Sometimes the boulders can actually be helpful and push you up. Uh, that was really good RNG there. As soon as you get this, you want to continue. Exit the dungeon. And you want to actually face left and play it. You can also face right and play it. I'm going to go ahead and explain the ocarina mechanics here while I'm walking through the clouds. Just follow the route I'm taking. Um, so, the ocarina is used to warp you between certain points that you unlock by getting pieces of the Triforce. At the moment, we have the first three pieces. There's a hot piece there. Um, the first two just take you to the um, entrance of the first two dungeons, but the third Triforce piece is what allows you to access this cloudy area. Um, so, by default, when you start the game, uh, there's a value in memory for the ocarina like whistle number, the warp number. Um, this number will be 1. When you play the whistle uh, while facing right, it increments the number by 1, uh, like increases it, and when you face left, it will decrease it by one. So you want to decrease it, wrap around to, um, to three. Oh, oops, my bad. So you want to place a super bomb and then pause and use the whistle. And that will cause the super bomb to damage those things and hopefully kill them instantly. Um, if you try to switch over to the ocarina manually, then, um, you might end up, um, like running out of time anyway so then you um you want to get to safety if you get hit um then you can't be picked up by the whistle and then you have to leave the screen and come back to do it again so you want to face right to go to the number four whistle point now that we have triforce four that's what allows you to progress here um then we can do this <clears throat> and in here is a very dangerous mini boss. What you want to do for this? Oops. Oh. Okay. Well, that's what happens if you. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens if you mess up. He will kill you instantly. I actually don't remember him doing that. And I'm wondering if that means that I missed a heart piece somewhere. No. No, you are supposed to go into the second row only when you do that. Okay. Um. So yeah, you lose a lot of time if that happens. Uh, so don't don't let it happen. <laughs> um. If that happens, um, right there I just incremented round to one, so you actually want to go right and then left to do it again, so I'm wasting a lot of time here. Play the whistle to escape here. Okay, so I'm actually not used to him showing up up there. I wonder if that's something to do. He pretty much always, from my experience, shows up near the pond. I think that might have something to do with the fact that I've like save and quit and perhaps waited around so the RNG might have moved in a less predictable way. Yeah, he's not usually this high up. Um, anyway, so you want to make sure you go on the boomerang, and then you want to go boomerang, sword, sword, boomerang, sword, sword, boomerang, sword, sword, boomerang, sword, sword, boomerang, sword, sword. I really don't have anything else to say here. Um, if you touch uh, any of these areas around the bottom of the pond, then time will kind of freeze for a second and you'll heal. If you absolutely can't get the boomerang method to work which you should be able to but if you can't then there is also a clock underneath this armos that if you uh pick this up will pause all enemies on the screen indefinitely so long as you don't leave uh, but you shouldn't need to do that uh, this also heals you you shouldn't need that if you have the code uh, and it can actually be a detriment because you can kind of get stuck here while it's healing and then get damaged by him so don't let that happen um 
You want to line yourself up like this. I actually, I should probably find some kind of good setup. Maybe, um, yeah, second rock in. You want to go like that, go right down. Over here, there's a shortcut that you can open with the candle uh, on the gray colored tree, but it's not necessary and it wastes time, so I don't do it. So then you want to just navigate through these trees to, oops, this area. Then you want to head up. Line yourself up with, um, actually no, you don't line yourself up yet. Um, when you enter here, you want to go left, right, left, and then line yourself up with this rock and go north. Um, there is a hint for that, uh, ref <laughs> amusingly referred to as why eat wet noodles to be west, east, west, south. Um, anyway, the reason you want to line yourself up like that is uh, you'll, pass you'll, you'll cut through this bush, um, it might actually be faster to uh, not align yourself with that, actually, to align yourself here and then move up. But you want to be in this exact spot, lined up with this bush, and then play the whistle. This is also hinted at somewhere. Um, we're just skipping the process by which the player would be expected to find these hints, basically. Uh, allows us to save a lot of time. Um, it's just information, so it's not needed for even for 100%. You want to try to remember where this is. Um, relative to the other features, line yourself up to get in here, switch to arrows, um, thankfully the benefit of not being able to skip text means that you can focus on switching items instead. Over here you can see there's kind of a, um, I can't move further up, but there is kind of a red uh, tint to the rock up there, so you want to fire an arrow there and then, oh, that was weird, don't know why that wasn't working, but yeah, um, I'll open upstairs, go immediately right, Use a boomerang if you need to. And then this guy will give you an upgraded medallion of strength in exchange for yours. Once you do that, exit. Follow the path back left. Head down. head left immediately and then line yourself up with that bush and go through the wall like that. Um, open up the entrance here and now we're in level 5. Level 5 is entirely movement based. Um, it's a gigantic maze so you're not going to know the way through unless you you know, look at a walkthrough or a map or something. Um, there are actually maps of this level around. I made one. Um, it doesn't have the items in it, but you can cross-reference that uh, with where the items are supposed to be and use that to help you. I'll put a link to that in the description if I remember. Um, so you want to head up, go to this first little corridor here, go down a bit, up, keep going right. Then you want to head down this way. As soon as you get that key, continue. It's pretty close, but I think that continuing is faster than walking out the way you came. So then you want to walk up this way, have your super bombs ready. This is the other use of super bombs. By this point, you would have access to a shop uh, in normal gameplay. You're supposed to use that key to access um, a letter that you give to somebody in the shop. but um, And we are picking up that letter because it's a unique collectible, but we're not going to be using it. So instead, we come over here like this, come up here, and you see this weird wiggly feature in the middle, you want to kind of go left, directly left from that. Keep going up. And then you want to actually not exit the screen. You head down the other branch, but then you loop around this thing, and then go straight up. Left. Like that. And you want to hit this warp, and here's your letter. Um, This is the door that we're skipping. Um, and then you want to actually use the two keys that we just got to jump ahead a little bit. Um, this is a screen we're going to be returning to anyway, so it kind of doesn't matter the, which order you do this in. Uh, actually, I think you would lose time. There is potential here for my route being... Oops. For my route being um, actually somewhat suboptimal, but um, I think that this is pretty good. It's the best one I've been able to find. You might be able to do things in a slightly different order here. Anyway, then you want to head down from here. Make sure you hit that button. I mean, actually, you have to hit the button. Never mind. 
Um, head down this way. And then loop around here, and it's basically just a long kind of sneaking velvet rope type thing. Make sure to try not to get uh, caught in corners. That would uh, obviously cost a tiny bit of time, but it can add up. Another key. Um, this is the letter room, so you want to actually proceed to the raft. This is where I say there's potential for improvement, because doing this twice seems kind of redundant. I'm not sure if there's a better way of doing it, though. I'd have to recheck where these warps go to. The thing is that it's useful to come up here uh, twice, so I'm not sure. It's worth looking into, at least. You want to keep going left, and you want to go down, left, or left down, it doesn't really matter. And head up to this heart piece. Then you keep going down. And you don't want to transition screens. Once again, you want to kind of just follow this path. I, don't, I can't really tell you how to best to remember things. Um, I don't have any like mnemonics or anything. There's a hint somewhere that says the block blowing up uh, waffles will give you a reward. That's what that's referring to. Uh, there's another place you have to do that in level 7 as well. In this case, it's for a uh, bomb bag upgrade. You pay 50 rupees. Make sure you've filled up your rupees to have the ability to do that. And then you want to head to the second row here. But yeah, um, it's, it's kind of just a muscle memory type of thing. Every time I've tried to think too hard about it, I tend to mess up, so... Try to develop um, a gut instinct and follow that. So now we're heading to the third main section of the level, which is the rafting maze. Um, you want to head down immediately, and then left as, at the first opportunity, which is here. Rafting section, thanks, thankfully, gives you a fair amount of time to um, take a sip if you need to. Um, your, the longest break you get is about 30 seconds, so not enough to go and take a bathroom break, but the run's only about two hours. Uh, little under <clears throat> so I usually use it to take a sip there's the cheese you want to head right and you'll go back down to the place that you started um, and you'll keep going the same direction at first so let's see you want to hold right here and then go down these buoys indicate where you can turn obviously you want to skip this buoy this time and you're actually I'm not touching anything I'm just following the natural path of the of the raft you can see that I'm not touching anything on my keyboard um, I mean, I can be, but it won't do anything. So this is where I normally take a drink. <laughs> There's one more part, um, at the start of level 9. We can do it as well, but you have a bit shorter of a window there. <clears throat> so you come all the way up here, you skip this buoy that's next to the key, and then start holding right for this one, on its own. <clears throat> Again, not much to say here. The raft kind of moves automatically, so there's nothing you can do to speed this up. And then this will automatically kind of take you down so you don't press anything. Uh, you want to start holding up here to take the first turn up. And I believe you just want to leave it alone until you reach the top of the area. You can start holding right here if you want. Again, another screen with a single buoy, you go right, and then you want to start holding down to take this one. I like to think of it as have as being three buoys here, and you're going from the left to the middle one. Obviously, they're not all on screen at the same time, but yeah. And then this will take you to the final uh, collectible of the level for the tripods and, well, Iron Heart Container. It's worth kind of looking into how the raft mechanics work in Zelda, if you're not sure. Um, but, um, it should be fairly evident how this works. So you just want to make sure you're holding the direction you want to turn. Here you want to have the cheese equipped. Go straight ahead here, that button leads to some money.
switch to uh, Boomerang. And then the best way to fight Gliok from my experience is to go into his body, which doesn't damage you, and then slash down. Direct heal yourself so you can get sword beams. Um, if that happens, try to get back up into the body. Also try to avoid being hit by the bubble because that will obviously uh, disable your sword. And the only thing that can damage this guy that you have is the sword, so... Uh, you might want to try um, going a bit more aggressively for the head uh, once you, you know, with, sl with uh, stabs. Anyway, once uh once it's once it gets down to only a couple of them. Um, so you'll you'll notice there I just increased my super bomb count to four. That's because of the uh bomb bag up bomb bag up bomb bomb bag upgrade I got. Um, I believe that's actually a glitch or it might be a change. Um, it's supposed to only increase it to three because it's supposed to be a quarter of the number of bombs you can carry. So it should have increased to a capacity of three, but for some reason it increases to a capacity of um, four instead. Uh, so I, we don't go into this cave, but I'm going to show this off just for reference. Um, stone is at the top, bushes on the left, stump on the right, and almost on the bottom. So you want to follow that. <laughs> um, that's what these indicate. This part is very boring and tedious, but stick with it because there's nothing else you can really do. Um, here you might be tempted to hold right to immediately go off the dock, but you actually have to step off of it first. This didn't used to be the case in older versions. Here, because we started and ended with right, we can act that actually counts as the same right because of the way that um, maze path mechanics work. It basically checks the last four and it doesn't clear it out after a successful path, so you can use the same right. So now we want to go right. I think I actually might have messed that up. <laughs> up. Up. Nope. I actually did that right. We're going to be getting two heart pieces in very quick succession soon, so that's why I have both of them in the same split. Unfortunately, there's no other place during this maze where you can use the the, the Q trick I just described, um, where it checks the last four and you can kind of reuse a direction. It's the only place you can do it at the beginning, but that's okay. There's actually really good uh, enemy RNG there. They didn't get in my way at all. Same with the boulders. Usually these things hit me all over. Um, so just try your best to get through this without taking too much, uh, knockback. The damage doesn't really matter because you can heal it, but... You wanna head over... God damn. You wanna head over to this. This is not marked. Um, this, this is just hinted by when you go to this screen normally, you'll, um, you'll see that there's a ledge there. If you use the map, you can work out that those screens are connected. That's your only hint. Here you have to kill these tectites. They're a piece of shit, um... Just uh, try to get them into a convenient position with the boomerang and then walk up and hit them. You want to go to two? You're required to take this warp ring. Um, and then you want to go to one. We're actually skipping uh, to one of the drop-off locations, uh, which is just a shortcut. Um, you shouldn't need it during the run. <clears throat> but if you're playing without the cheat code and wanted some insurance, then you could. So here we want to... Um, Oh, forgot to mark off that. We have more levers. You can ignore them and push this rock. From here you want to go uh, down. Uh, I can't really show you the path through this. Um, you're intended to use the lens of truth to get through, but it's faster to do it now, I think. Um, it's not too hard. You just want to start in the wall, go as far right as you can while holding down. And then as soon as you start... Actually, can I just hold right and down? Because I think that might be what I do. Okay. No. As soon as you as soon as you get to here-ish, you want to just hold right, and then it's kind of a zigzag here. Um, just try your best to follow it. And then you want to switch to super bombs. Hit in here. Super bomb this. Make sure you don't get that. Can happen. Unfortunately, you can kind of get stuck on the ladder like this. Um, try to. 
move accurately to avoid that. Here we have level 6, which is... Uh, actually, that'll be uh, the end of this segment, but next time we'll be going over how to progress in level 6.